Hello everyone, this is Lily Sky Tarot. There's no perfect way of saying it, but I've been through a lot the last three weeks um, with a loss uh, in the family. So uh, thank you for being patient waiting for this video. So this video is for the full moon in Leo, January 28th, 2021. 9 degrees 5 minutes and the high peak would have been for the Pacific Standard Time 11.16 a.m. and that would have been around 2.16 uh, p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time I do believe uh, and in my chart it looks like a grand trine which it's like a triangle in on the charts as you can see and this fosters like uh, or develops harmony, uh, fosters confidence, creativity, and flow. So the main thing I wanted to focus on is you see that Leo, it's a full moon in Leo. Leo's in the fourth house. And then up here you have the 10th house, okay? And you have Aquarius, okay? So these are opposite from each other, all right? And I purchased a really fun astrology uh, transit book, and it was really interesting how it focused on um, organizing the houses as pairs and having the fourth and the tenth house um, it focuses on the origin and the destination so I the way I'm interpreting it is the fourth house meaning home right and the fourth house being home uh, your roots right your family and your inner security, how you feel. Do you feel secure? How can you bring harmony to your fourth house and your fifth house issues? I mean, your fourth house and your 10th house issues. And the 10th house is like your career. Um, it, it relates to powerful power, right? Taking power, having power. Um, your 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 purpose your reputation your career your status that's your outer world right what you want to achieve so the affirmation can be i achieve where the fourth house is your inner world i nurture right and nurturing your family your home your roots where you come from and your inner securities right so how you feel inside about yourself how you feel um do you feel strong and that's Cancer's house, the the fourth house, okay? And then Cancer's opposite is Capricorn. So it's that connection between Cancer and Capricorn. Cancer, the water sign. Uh, Capricorn, the earth sign. So it's, it's where you come from and where your destination is. And that's kind of like a lesson in life with the fourth house, Leo is there. The 10th house, Aquarius is there all right and this this line this connection you want to think of your opposite sign especially if you're a cancer and the trine will affect everyone will feel the energy of the fourth house issues tenth house issues and this is lining up with the twelfth house issues okay and twelfth house is the pisces pisces house and the twelfth house is dealing with you know your dreams and your spiritual life right your faith life i dream what are you dreaming of what powerful dreams were you having leading up to the the full moon okay and i'm and i gotta take a look at the chart here i'm gonna look on my my ipad so give me a, a moment trying to call up another window if i bring it up properly <laughs> But looking on the chart, and I'm trying to see when was uh, the 4th. So yeah, the 4th, I had a very powerful dream on the 4th. And that was before the new moon in Capricorn on January 13th, right? So I just wanted to kind of look back. I like to look back on things. But even if, it, if you had powerful dreams after the, the, the new moon leading up to this full moon it's like what were what was your spiritual mind like your 12th house energy right the 12th house is about also self-sabotaging ourselves it's about um transcending you know reaching above 
you know, transcending an, a, a, a life, a situation, right? So it, it deals with death. It deals with reincarnation, right? Um, it deals with institutions and it deals with um, solitude, right? So all these words is kind of like a transitional period in, in your life or in someone else's life, right? And with this triangle, you think of, I like to think of with triangles, um, the, the, the powerful three, um, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And when, when they say Father, I think of also the Mother Essence. It's not a new age thing. It's an old world thing where God is no gender or male and female. In old teachings, God had a wife or a female partner, so they were one, but they could also be, be two. So those are some old, old teachings. But it's this connection to creator. It's, it's, it's this, um, this triangle, okay, that is connecting the balancing or the awareness, right, of your home, of your career, your survival in the world, your inner world, your outer world, and your spiritual world. That's the best way of saying it, right? So you have to nurture yourself from within. Uh, this moon is saying you have to um, when you nurture yourself within, you're also, you're empowering your achievement and your life purpose in this life, right? This, this life and Capricorn is very powerful in organizing yourself in that. Okay. And you can still connect to this energy, me putting up this video today, and you still have a spiritual connection. I feel like for me, it's saying you can be in the Capricorn energy and still be spiritual and still um, nurture yourself. So it's it's like this 4, 10, and 12 energy house that is coming together and saying, okay, how can you better yourself, you know, under this full moon? And Leo is powerful, okay? When you go through hard times like I've been going through, um, it just reaffirms confidence, pow personal power, and it's not just about me, but it is about me right now. But that's my wish for everyone is to feel strong, feel love, feel confident, whatever path you're on, whatever spiritual belief you have without being disrespectful, you can still be strong. You don't have to be, you know, a bleep, 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 right? <laughs> so you can have that, that powerful energy within you. I, I want to mention the transit because when I looked at the chart, there's many transits, but Mars square Saturn, I believe in Taurus, five degrees, 57 minutes, Mars conjunct Uranus, four, de four degrees, two minutes. In Aquarius, you have Jupiter conjunct Saturn, four degrees, 24 minutes. So there's many conjunctions, but these three are very strong and they're the main one under the chart. They're the main one. So you have a Taurus in your chart and you have an Aquarius in your chart. It doesn't always have to fall in your zodiac sign for it to be powerful or reflective in a teaching, learning, healing moment for you using astrology. I like to use it to understand what is going on energetically and then see how it lines up in my life and then use it in a spiritual way to be wiser to understand and be stronger, right? So what I want to do is just look at that aspect. So let's go over that right now. So I'm going to jump around, but I'm going to focus first on Taurus, okay? Because Taurus has Mars and Taurus has um, this connection of Mars uh, squaring Saturn up here. Okay, Saturn being in Aquarius right now. Okay, so just this angle right here. And people that are born with this aspect, they're unable to finish what they've started, right? So this takes a lot of like root chakra, deep meditation, and a, a constant practice that you can start on the new moon. You know, if you're a Taurus, even if you're an Aquarius with this, or anyone that has this this type of um alignment right it it's not that the person is no good or they can't they don't want it they really want that success they really want to accomplish something whatever that thing is but unable to finish it unable to finish the thing that they've started 
right? And just giving up whenever there's an, uh, uh, an, an obstacle in the way, even if it's something that just appears, you know, to be an obstacle by chance, it happens. It doesn't mean that it's, it's a sign to stop doing something. It just happens, right? So they just have to learn to be more persistent. So looking into your chart and seeing what's in your chart. And even if it's not in your chart, it takes a powerful master to say, I'm going to be more powerful about this regardless of my zodiac but if you want to infuse your zodiac finding a strong zodiac sign maybe your opposite sign if it has those attributes of being persistent right so learning how to be more persistent and completing things that you started so this is a powerful alignment to understand right and this might have have to do with your work and having faith and protecting your energy and all of that spiritual work the 12th house needs you to do and protect and think of protecting your energy is in a strong relations to Taurus and your home right Taurus represents a home so maybe feng shui and cleansing your home knowing that the lunar uh new new moon is coming up you know the days leading up to the to the new moon is when you start cleansing cleaning the home right um, I don't know if I made a video on that yet. I think I'm supposed to be making one on that, right? So that's a powerful thing and it's in di direct relations uh, to your success in your home, you know, doing some kind of spiritual practice. Even if a person doesn't tell you or you don't think that person is spiritual, people are all, those people are the ones that are doing the most work that you think are not, whether they're, they're praying from their, their, their religious book or whatever, everyone is doing some form of, of, of protection and prayer uh, uh, work, right? So that could be a powerful thing for Taurus to really look into and for Aquarius to look into and finding direction on work and how you're gonna structure your life. You could be going into retirement, you could be looking at a new job or how to organize your finances okay but that saturn is, is is telling aquarius to have structure in that and and mars is saying to taurus fight for yourself using this uh power of um saturn okay so looking now at um mars conjuncts uranus okay so looking at that looking at uranus and saying okay um this is this is a, a rebel kind of state, you know, a fighting. This is like a fighting back type of energy, right? It's not here to, to play around, okay? So when, when we have this, uh, Uranus or Mars conjuncts Uranus, four degrees, two minutes, right? It, it gives people the sense of, I'm an individual, right? And it's like, oh, okay, that's the only thing that matters. I'm an individual. And that's great, right? So this Mars being right next to, they're right next to each other in this, in this conjunction, right? Because you're dealing with a square already. You already have a square where there is some kind of tension, right? Squaring off. There's some kind of tension building, building up. So... Having that just means that there needs to be change. There's a, there's a challenge in that square. There's tension from that Mars and Saturn square, right? There's a tension and there's a reacting to something. Now, when you're dealing with the conjunction, okay, they're right next to each other. They're like close, that Mars and Uranus, zero degrees, right? So it's the, the, the psychology behind it is it's a union, right? And it is a, a concentration of your energy that's fusing, coming together, binding together, an action of that. Now, this has a good and bad having the Mars conjunct Uranus because they're both powerful planets who are the boss. I think of them as the boss. You can't tell me anything to do on Uranus. You can't tell me what to do on Mars. Mars is like, you're not telling them nothing. So this gives the person that the confidence of, of being independent. They think of themselves as an individual and they're looking out for the best interest for themselves. They like to think of new things and new ways of looking at things, new insights, okay? Discovering new things, finding out new things. These people probably are really good at researching and you know, they have to make sure that they don't come to conclusion 
of anything where they cause a fight or an argument that they have to be mindful of that because they're filled with so much confidence so they have to learn how to zen that out and this conjunction it, like I said it can be very risky because these both planets are also very impulsive so when you're impulsive that's great if it's a great instinct and a great move but being impulsive can be very dangerous so we're all kind of either experiencing that and trying to tame it because we're really powerful at that and I had to do that I had to calm myself and address people in a better way than they deserved or that they probably did deserve if I'm really being all Buddhist about it but just being better uh, in the situation to not make it worse but still be strong right so and and this conjunction can also make a person become being hypocrite okay and impulsive so there's a positive aspect to everything everything is a yin and yang pretty much so it's just finding that that best solution of how you're going to deal with that okay so i just wanted to point that out to you guys let's look at another i'm only looking at three major transit or aspects um aspects i mean that that is happening okay so another conjunction right and th this this conjunction again it's the same thing it's a union it's a binding kind of the energies together fusing them together so the jupiter conjuncts saturn okay so jupiter and saturn are right next to each other here in aquarius in the 10th house of capricorn okay so this energy it's it can either go both ways and i think i remember doing this one before in another video where sat if saturn is more dominant then it it, it can create people or a personality that like to have a forever or binding uh relationship and they also like to teach others because that's that authoritative saturn energy and jupiter energy of just expanding and growing okay and if the jupiter becomes more dominant or more strong then the person can have too much confidence and even feel more uh, more self-important than the other so you're having the same kind of energy in the mars conjuncts jupiter of being overconfident with and also with jupiter conjunct saturn okay so you're having that powerhouse energy and this in in aquarius this jupiter conjunct saturn is four degrees 24 minutes so a longer duration of time the second longest duration of time after the mars squares saturn okay so this kind of triangle can bring about a very powerful two planets two different planets and their powerful energy okay and now with with aquarius aquarius can use this energy of jupiter conjunct saturn is to figure out how to manage your life right now with this whole virus and everything that we're going through um social issues and and the virus and and just trying to deal with death loss of loved ones uh trying to figure out how you're going to financially survive and if you are whatever your situation is right because i could go on and on but it's trying to give yourself a strong foundation and feel like you're thriving even in chaos boom okay and with with this uranus and mars energy you can look at it as how how are you fighting for yourself right how are you showing up for yourself protecting your energy in the best way you can without getting yourself in trouble and just dealing with the the leo energy of the attention is going to be strong if you mess up if you're doing something that is totally out of control that that emotion is going to be there it's going to affect the home it's going to affect um just your personal happiness and feeling like you are in control so if you happen to have just you know not handle a situation very well that can be a result on the other hand if you are handling things the best way you can then using this energy of the moon you can always use it even three days after the full moon to really just tap into 
finding your own center, your own balance again, and reaffirming your self-confidence, uh, reaffirming a better flow to your life, bringing harmony into your life, bringing creativity into your life. So let me start with Leo and go around the circle. So Leo, I think, you know, for these three zodiac signs, you pretty much had your reading. And Leo, it's all about the home and, and family and how how is the fourth house affecting you in this uh, full moon in Leo. So how is that affecting you? How does that feel? We're in the birthday season of Aquarius. Okay. Sun in Aquarius. So Leo, this is like, <clears throat> you know, a time for you to, to look at where you are right now and, and where, where exactly you want to be right. Emotionally healing, anything that has to do with the moon, your emotions, your, how, how you feel about yourself. All right. So let me look at this. I just want to double check. Okay. So an Aquarius being your opposite sign, it's very powerful time for you to even tap into all the planets that's in Aquarius, all the opposite signs can tap into that planet and see how it's affecting you. So Leo, it's about just getting in touch with your emotions and how it affects your home, your parents. Some of you might be dealing with parental um, issues, um, you know, family, family issues, right? And all of that fourth house issue. The third house has cancer, right? Where are we going backwards? Let's go forward. So let's look at Virgo. So Virgo, you're, you're in the fifth house and the fifth house, hopefully my mic is okay. Okay. The fifth house is governing your, your, your romance life, your love life. Maybe some of you want to have kids, expecting to have kids, finding a, a creative, out, <coughs> excuse me, finding a creative outlet for, um, how you can better, you know, serve yourself or your family. There's no planets there. So there's nothing for you to learn planetary wise. It's more about being in that house energy. You know, how are you serving yourself, your personal creativity? How are you showing up for yourself, being creative, maybe to heal any kind of emotional feelings, just being, being distractive or being project oriented, right? And with Valentine's day coming up, this is a great time to plan something romantic for yourself and your partner, if you have one, or just being creative for yourself, maybe doing some kind of childlike activities. This house has to do with children. So something positive like that. Libra is the sixth house energy is very strong where you're thinking of your daily life. And again, your service or how, how you are being served or how you're being able to take care of yourself and any improvements you can do with your work and looking at your health. Okay. Very powerful there. Scorpio, it's like the fortune energy is there. So this is a great time for you to look at, um, your, your, your relationships, your work, a combination of your work and your family life can be a strong issue there, but also how you use money, how you call money in, um, maybe play the lottery. I know that the lottery has been a big topic news. Um, I was recently out on the East coast. So a lot of, um, money kind of, you know, luck, you guys have a lot of money luck. So hopefully that will be great for you guys. Um, and, and some kind of seventh house issues as well that will deal with, um, marriage or partnership or just awareness of, of, um, relationships in your life, whether it's yours or someone else's and Sagittarius, uh, you guys still have the South node. So a lot of South node work that still needs to be done. That's showing up in your life right now. And it has a very strong Saturn energy about the contracts or the agreements that you have and past life lessons. Okay. So just be mindful of not repeating mistakes or really, really learning from your weakness, not doing things that's familiar to you just because it's easy. Um, you know, not necessarily staying in your comfort zone just because it's easy. Uh, really looking at, uh, how, how your actions or what you're thinking can affect your money, 
your sex life, um, death, any experiences of death, um, money and other people's money and how people are handling money. Are you being negative about that or are you being positive about that? Are you causing more pain and more problems or are you actually helping? So that will be a strong eighth house issue as well. Okay, uh, Capricorn will have to really look at the Pluto and the Venus, I believe. Okay, so how is that working out for you guys? Uh, what are you giving your attention to when it comes to uh, looking at how you deal with like loss and how you deal with uh, a change, a needed change that needs to happen? Okay, and how does that relate uh, into your love life? Okay, or your relationship life. So just finding that 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 balance or that harmony of um, balancing your Pluto thoughts, feelings, um, energy, how you're absor how you're viewing things, and what how are you looking at your own situation, someone else's situation, and how does that add up when it comes to um, love, commitment. Um, your own personal thoughts on on family okay very important because this is a very important issue for families right how you deal with your own personal power the power that you have to to um do things and to affect change or transformation in your life and how how do you deal with the power that you have to influence someone else's life when it comes to needing love wanting love um, how do you infuse harmony in your life and that's like a ninth house thing so it's going to deal with maybe if you're teaching someone if you're learning something uh, maybe even your own philosophy your own beliefs and things what you know what are you putting out there that's a concrete message or an email or a text so that's publishing you can think of it like that because you know, just be mindful of what you're saying when it comes to things that affect both uh, Pluto and and Venus, right? And it, and and your words and the things that you're saying, your actions you're doing will affect your travel. For some of you, it will, it will affect law. You know, maybe a court issue or something. Um, how you travel, you know, um, and and then drawing in from your own religion or spiritual belief. So it's a lot of. Uh, a ninth house issues that you could be dealing with Capricorn and the Capricorn energy can be affecting other people's way of travel their love life and so on so Capricorn is managing that okay now the attention is I feel it's I can read that this MC as being both on Capricorn and Aquarius right so Aquarius you guys happy birthdays to all of you guys you have the Sun you have um, uh, Jupiter and you have Saturn so we and and you guys also have um, Mercury as well okay so you guys have a lot that that is going on for you guys right now so if I'm if I'm incorporating this Mercury Mercury has to do with of course how we communicate our our um, how we are learning how we're thinking right our intelligence and then infusing that with where do you want to take yourself Okay, how do you want to feel like you're growing, you're expanding, but you're also organizing your life right now and your future planning, okay? Now, Pisces in the 11th house, you're dealing with your own Neptune energy, okay? So it's it's a great time for you to connect to yourself, connect to your hopes and your dreams, connecting to um, you being reliable for yourself and how others are being reliable for you and using your your knowledge and also strongly your intuition right what do you what do you hope to be because you have a lot of uh, 11th house issues so your friends your groups your goals what do you aspire to be right um, how can you contribute to a group kind of setting or if, if you're not in a group setting then how can you contribute to yourself right how can you better yourself and better your your relationships your outer relationships and your goals maybe your 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 dreams and your goals now aries you guys are still dealing with chiron energy 
So this is quite interesting. Okay. So it's looking at you teaching yourself, learning from yourself, because Aries is kind of hard to get you to do something. It has to be worded in the right way for you to respond to it because you want to be in control of yourself and be the one mainly to, you don't want to be accused of anything. You don't want to have any issues. So you really want to be the one that's leading yourself. So you don't have anyone to answer to or deal with any kind of you know, craziness. So even though someone might think you're hard headed, it's just you protecting yourself from dealing with other people's, um, weaknesses or need to be, um, appreciated when you feel like, Hey, <laughs> you don't really need all this extra energy pointed towards you, you know? So w this Chiron energy is, is really saying, and we have to think of Chiron being this this energy, if you will, or asteroid, we're going to look at it energetically, um, between Saturn and Uranus. So there's some strength there and some rebelling there. So where do you really need healing? Where do you, how can you create this bridge, if you will, right between your spiritual world and your material world? And how can, how can that be healing for you? Right. Focusing on that and being in Pisces house, you have the, the spiritual life, the spiritual aspect of Pisces. Right. So it's that spiritual energy, spiritual healing, tapping into um, empowering your own spirituality, your own psychic ability, your own healing ability, receiving healing that you need. It's a great time for you to nurture yourself. And if you're going through a hard time right now, any kind of, any kind of hard time, this is a great time to receive healing. So even pulling, even doing some Qigong where you're connecting to the, the elemental, uh, energies for healing or doing self Reiki or receiving Reiki from someone or listening to, uh, healing sounding music to, to heal whatever emotion or physical issue that you feel that you're, you're going through, whatever you're lacking is, is a daily practice of self healing, um, would be great for Aries in combination with whatever your, your goal is right now, whatever else you need to work on healing should be involved when we have that Chiron energy there. Taurus, Taurus, you guys have Lilith, you guys have, um, the Mars energy. So you have Lilith, you have Mars and you have, uh, Uranus, right? So this is a time for you to not allow yourself to feel like you are suffering in any way. Don't allow yourself to be the victim of anything or, or, t you know, tell yourself that even if you feel like someone has treated you poorly or you're experiencing any kind of bad relationship. Okay. It's really good for you not to hang out in that mood for a long time. Don't allow yourself to be in any form of den denial. Okay. Um, don't allow yourself to look outside of yourself for happiness. Right. And just think, and then problem solve this Lilith energy is just saying problem solve. Think of it as everything is numbers and just problem solve your way out of whatever it is that you're going through and learn from it and use this Mars Uranus conjunction, um, energy in the best way that, that you can. Okay. And this is like a, an energetic lesson from this full moon in Leo for everyone moving forward to the next new moon. Okay. Which is going to be the new lunar calendar year. So be mindful of your Mars and Uranus energy being in this conjunction. How is it working together? Is, is it bringing about justice? You know, is it bringing about, you know, it can, it, this energy can bring about justice right? Like swiftly, it might be upsetting to some, but it could bring about that type of energy. Okay. It's, it, it's, it's really, f this conjunction is uniting or some kind of union, right? Um, some kind of binding energy, right? It's, it's binding the energy based on an action. So it's not like this Uranus and Mars energy didn't come out of nowhere. It's a buildup of other alignments. And now it's in Taurus and Taurus is like, 
okay? I'm about the home, I'm about parents, I'm about the root of the matter, I'm about that inner security. You know, it's that I nurture, it's the inner world. It's, it's gonna make the inner world feel more balanced and that's gonna directly affect the outer world, okay? It's gonna directly affect uh, our, because your, your opposite sign is Scorpio, right? So it's definitely gonna have a, a powerful effect from the second house and the eighth house, right? So this energy is going to be personal and it's also gonna be sharing um, the resources. I know it might seem out there, but it's about you feeling like, hey, I'm here hanging out in, in like the first house energy and I have to put myself first. And all of my resources, all of my personal resources and all of the resources that I'm sharing that's going to be a powerful experience from this full moon to the new moon. So like where you live, where's your home? Are you sharing your home? Um, do you feel like I'm not, my personal space isn't being invaded? And that's kind of hard for a tourist, even if it's not, even if it's a might, a slight little incident, a tourist will feel a certain way if they're not the one in control of the house or that situation. So certain things will seem bigger than it is just because of how your energy is. So it's just being slow to react and not be impulsive like we were saying earlier about the about the uh, Mars the Mars and the Mars squaring or the Mars conjunction of Uranus, right? So we have to be careful with that. And being in the ascending there's, you know, there's a lot of attention there too, okay? And it requires a more personal focus on yourself. Now, looking at Gemini, Gemini is in this kind of like second house um, issue, uh, second house and, and first house too. You guys will get a little bit of that, okay? Um, just like Taurus will get a little bit of 12th house and first house. I didn't mention that. But Gemini, you have the North Node. So you are first and foremost dealing with the Jupiter type of energy, right? You want to increase, you want to grow, you, you're thinking about your future, you're thinking about your challenges, you're thinking about where you want to get to, your destination, you're thinking about what is unknown to you and seeking um, an understanding for what is unknown. But as a true Gemini, you can really just not allow, you can put a positive spin on something so that you do, so that you're not making a worry your main focus when there's really nothing nothing that you can do about it okay so gemini being in the second house you're dealing with money um the i have energy so really focus on what you have right now make the best of your personal resources um your skills what you value what you possess and your money because you're in that second house of taurus so use those positive qualities to the best of your ability and also some of you energetically will be feeling that i am energy that awareness of self okay um your appearance how you look your outer personality and all of that so you know don't worry about certain things that you can't make um great right now nothing has to be perfect but it's just about focusing on your home and what you can do from your starting point where you are okay a very and there's no planets there so there's no planet energy that you need to focus on just the the meaning of the house so even if i don't say something that is associated with each house it's up to you to kind of look at it and then piece it together and say oh, okay yeah money is an issue what i possess how can i how can the things that i possess are they working for me or working against me how maybe i need to do some feng shui maybe i need to organize my things maybe i i need to focus you know writing down things you know whatever your weakness is you, there is an opposite to it that you can empower that cancer third house gemini the mind you're in that 
third house of your mind, your mental state, your learning. So some of you could be achieving uh, very strongly right now, communicating well. It's the I think energy. It's your environment that you're in, your ability to achieve something, uh, to learn something, to expand. You can even tap into the ruling planet of that zodiac signs house you're in and just connecting to higher learning achieving there's no planets there so you're really focusing on your mental state and your mental state also requires healing so there's so many different layers and levels that i can say but when you're in the third house you look and you say what am i experiencing am i achieving something am i learning something am i dealing with something with my sibling or someone that i'm related to and how can i make that better how can i make that communication better um, and and how can I communicate well for myself right so it's just finding that mercury uh, balance there for cancer experiencing the third house and a little bit of the second house okay and you guys and Leo are both dealing with the IC energy okay so that's something that I didn't mention as well okay so <clears throat> that is the reading for the ast astrology reading for the full moon in Leo, uh, the, the 28th of January, 2021. Thank you guys for watching. If you found this beneficial, please click like, because it does help the channel, um, you know, for here on YouTube. Uh, it does help us um, to continue bringing the content. So definitely uh, click like and um, that's it. I hope that this uh, connect with you guys and I'll see you guys next time.